Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a very detailed dense smoke simulation using the new render engine Eevee in Blender 2.8. So if you haven't done it already make sure you download the beta, the link is down in the description. Once you have it unzipped and ready to go this will be what it looks like and now we're ready to start the tutorial. So first off let's delete this cube by pressing X and then deleting it. Then press Shift A, we'll go to Mesh, and then Plane. Now if you ever get stuck on what button I press, just look down in the bottom left and you should see whatever shortcut I do. So for example, if I press Shift A, you can see right here, Shift A on the bottom left. Okay, so now that we have our plane, let's go over to the Physics Settings. We'll go up to Object, Quick Effects, right here, and then Quick Smoke. This will automatically add a domain for us with a basic material already in place. Now that we have this domain, let's scale it up to the size that we want. So I'm going to press S, I'll scale it up right about there, then I'll go S, X, and scale it along the X. Go into front view by pressing 1 on your number pad, then G, and we'll move the domain right about here. Maybe scale it up slightly, and then S, Y, we'll scale it uh, that way just a tiny bit. All right, there we go. Now that we have this, if we were to play it, we can see the smoke just rise straight up and it doesn't look that good. So let's add in a couple force fields so the smoke will actually go in the direction that we want. The first force field that we'll be adding is, we'll go to force field and then wind. Press G to move and we'll place it right about here and then we'll rotate it till it's about this angle. We don't want it to be pointing down, just around here I think will be good slightly pointed upwards. Then go over to the physics settings if it's not already selected. For the strength we're going to be setting this to 6. Point, well that's 5, 6.5, there we go. And then the flow we're going to be setting this to 3. The next force field that we'll be adding is a turbulence force field and what this will do is it will just mess up the smoke, make it look a little bit more random. So to do that press shift A, go to force field and then turbulence. Press G and I'm just going to place it right in the middle of our domain. Now the strength of this one we are going to be setting to 20. So it's quite high. And then the flow, we don't really need to turn this up but maybe just go like 0.2 or something like that. I think that'll be fine. Alright, so now if we play this, if we hit the backspace and then hit spacebar, we should see that the smoke is going this way a little bit. Alright, it's looking a little bit better, but there's still a couple things that we need to do. So, let's set up the settings for our domain. You can right click on your domain, and then over here, the resolution we will leave at 32 for now. Once we do a final bake, we're going to be setting this value to 96, but for now we can leave it. The temperature difference, this is how fast the smoke will rise, or how slow. We are going to be setting this to zero. I don't want there to be any temperature difference, I just want the smoke to just flow this way. There you go, you can see it's working like that. Okay, and now if we scroll down uh, the border collisions, we're going to be setting this to collide all. So if the smoke touches any of the sides, it will actually collide with it, which is what I want, so I'm going to leave it there. We'll scroll down to the field weights, the gravity, we're going to be setting this to about 0 0.2, 0 0.1, we'll just go 0 0.2 for now. We'll close that off and then open up the high res. So turn that on and open this up. Now some people might be confused about what the difference is between the resolution right here and the high resolution down here. Basically this resolution right here is how many voxels are in the simulation and then right here is how many times that is multiplied. This number will actually change the simulation if you add more to it it might look slightly different. Uh, this one does not change the simulation what it does is it'll take those voxels and just multiply them by two and adding more detail without changing it. So for example, if you like uh, a resolution of 32, you like how the simulation looks, but you want to add more detail to it, you would want to change the resolution down here. And what this does is it'll take that base number and multiply it by two. So with a resolution of one, it'll take 32 and multiply it by two, which would be 40 or uh, 64. Then if we were going to go up one, it would be 128, and then so on. With the final resolution, we're going to be setting this to 3, and then this to uh, 96. But for now, we're going to leave it right as it is, because I don't want my computer to slow down. 
If you're wanting to learn more about high resolution and resolution divisions, uh, there's a video that I found that was pretty interesting. Link is down in the description if you want to go check that out. Okay, so now let's go over to the flow settings. We're going to right click on our plane. We're going to be setting the surface value to 1. And basically what the surface value does is it will expand the amount of smoke that is emitted. So let's say we set this to 3. We play it. You can see it's quite large around the surface. But if we were going to set this to 1 meter, we go back and play it again. You can see it's a lot closer to the plane. Okay, so we can leave everything as it is. We don't need to mess with the settings. Just that meter uh, we wanted to change to 1. So now let's go back to our domain settings and actually do a bake. So the resolution we're going to be setting to 96 and enter. We'll restart the animation. And then the high resolution we're going to be setting this value to 3. Once you do that we can open up our cast settings and here is where we bake in the smoke but as you can see it's grayed out the reason for that is because we haven't saved our project yet so to do that you can hit control s I'm just gonna save it to my desktop and call it smoke tutorial there we go and now as you can see the baking is now cle cleared up and we can actually bake it the end frame I'm gonna be setting to 200 I want there to be 200 frames in our animation and the end frame right here I can also set to 200. Now that we've done that we can go ahead save our project one more time then hit bake. Now this is just going to take a little bit of time so I'm going to pause the video here and once it's done we'll come back and finish out this tutorial. Okay our baking has finished and this is our result as you can see here if I just scroll through it looks pretty good the smoke starts to emit it looks really nice high detailed and there we go. All right, if we were going to go into rendered view by clicking this top right button right here, we would not see anything. The reason for that is because we need to go to the EV settings and actually set up the volumetrics. Let's do that real quick so we can actually see our smoke. Go over to the render settings right here and turn on volumetric. Make sure you turn on volumetric shadows or it will look terrible. I will put uh, two images on screen right now so you can see the difference between volumetric shadows on and volumetric shadows off. So now if we go into rendered view, we can see it's not that great. That's because we need to add some lighting to actually show our smoke. So let's restart the animation, go into solid view, and then right click on our lamp. Go over to the lamp settings and change it to a sun lamp. We're going to be setting the strength of this to 4 and then open up the shadows and turn on contact shadows. Go into top view, press G to move, we'll place it over here and then rotate it till it's facing the smoke. Go into side view and then rotate it upwards right about there and now if we go into rendered view and jump to frame let's say 113 we can see our smoke a little bit better. We'll mess with the material so it looks more dense in just a second. Uh, we need to go to the world settings and make sure the background is set to black. All right, there we go. Let's go back to solid view. We'll add in a plane so we can have a background. So press shift A, go to mesh and then plane. Press S to scale and we'll scale up the plane pretty big. Then go into edit mode. We'll right click on both of these back vertices and then press E to extrude. Z and drag it upwards. Then we can go over to the modifier settings, click add modifier and subdivision surface. Set both the view and the render to 6, then go into edit mode again, hit control or command R to add in a loop cut and drag this backwards. Now we have this nice smooth curved background. There we go. Now let's go into front view by pressing 1 on our number pad then hit control alt or uh, command option number pad zero to snap the camera to where we are looking then we can just right click on it move it to wherever we want I'll drag it backwards slightly till we get all of the domain in our frame now let's go to the material settings so we'll right click on our domain drag open a new window and then with your mouse hovering over this window you can hit shift F3 and if we actually open up this, you can see all of the shortcuts for all of the different 
uh, sheets we, we have here. So 3D viewport is shift F5, UV image editor is shift 10, and then the shader editor, which we are currently are on, is shift F3. You can press N to close off that panel, and here is where we set the density of our smoke. So for a really dense smoke simulation, I'm going to go with 450 for the density. I'm going to save my project and then go into rendered view up top here. So if I go rendered view, we can see our smoke and it looks pretty good. The color you can set to whatever you like. I might drag up the brightness, give it maybe a blue color, something like that I think will look good. And you might notice that there's still it still looks a little bit off. We set the high resolution to 3, but there's not that much detail in the smoke. The reason for that is because we need to go over to the settings over in the render settings and the tile size. This is important. Right now it's currently set to 8 pixels and the lower you go the more detail it will get. So if we go to 2 pixels there you can see that there's a lot more detail in our smoke and it actually looks pretty good. The sample size and then the shadow samples right here I've played around with these settings a little bit and there's just a slight difference between doubling the sample size on both of these and then what they currently are. And the issue is the render time. If I set this to 128, it'll double the render time, even maybe triple it. So in my opinion, it's not worth the time to render if we set this to a higher number. So I'm going to leave it at 64. Okay, we are almost ready to do an animation. The next thing I'm gonna do is right click on our plane and give it a material. So go over to the material tab and click on new. If we come over here, we can see our principled shader. I'm going to give this a slight metallic color so we have a little bit of reflection and then the roughness I'm going to turn that down slightly and then maybe just darken this up. Maybe give it a gray color. There we go. Actually that's a little too dark so I might drag that up slightly. The next thing that we need to do is open up the color management and that's found in the render settings down here at the bottom. If we open this up we're going to be setting the base contrast to high contrast and this will just give our overall look a little bit more sharpness and a little bit more shadows. So with that turned on, we are ready to render. So let's go over to the output settings and set a folder right here. So once you've found your folder that you want your animation to go to, just hit accept and you can see here is where that output will go. And I'm gonna leave this at PNG and the reason for that is because if we set this to a movie file or an MP4 file, it will have to finish the render to actually complete. If we stop it about halfway through, it's not gonna work. So I'm going to leave it at a PNG and then render all of those frames out in that folder. If you uncheck overwrite, if for some reason you need to pause the render, you can go ahead and uncheck that and then go back and render it again and it will resume at that frame that you stopped. It'll see that in that folder, it's rendered 113 frames and then it will start at 114, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave that off just in case I need to stop the render. I'm gonna save my project one more time. Before we render the animation, I realized that we need to turn on screen space reflection so we can actually see the background reflect. So if I go into render view, you can see there's some reflection right there. And then also I'm going to hit the W key and click on shade smooth. So now you can see that our plane is now smooth. Another thing that I just realized is we need to drag our plane down because if we look underneath, there's some smoke right there. So I'm gonna hit the G, Z, and drag this down till it's right next to the domain. And there we go, we'll have a nice uh, simulation. So now if we go into camera view, go into rendered view, we can see that there's a lot more smoke, which is what we want. Another thing that I'll do is right click or select your plane, go over to the outliner, and turn off it in the rendered view. So once we do the animation, uh, we won't be able to see the plane, it'll just be smoke emitting from uh, nowhere, which is what I want. So I'm going to save my project again, then go up to render and click on render animation. Once this is done, we'll grab all of those frames and then sequence them out into a movie file. Okay, the render has finished and now I'm going to show you how to sequence out all of those pictures that you rendered. So first off, let's hit exit right there and let's go up to the menu and click on Video Sequencer. Now make sure you're on frame one, so click on the backspace, then go up to Add, Image Sequence, and then navigate to where your images are. 
Once you've found your images, press A and select all of them and go add image strip. Once you've done that, we can see our image strip right here. Now we can go over to the output settings and actually set this to a movie file. So the file format right here, I'm gonna be setting it to MPEG. The encoding, I'm gonna go MP4. And now that we've done that, all we have to do is go up to render and click on render animation or the shortcut control F12. Once you click on this, though, a new window will pop up and it will grab all of those images and render it into an animation. Once this is finished, that animation will be in the folder that you originally set your output to. And so once this is done rendering, we'll see that video. Once the render has finished, you can go ahead and open up your folder and you should see the animation right here. So there you go guys, that is how you create a dense smoke simulation using the new render engine Eevee in Blender 2.8. Thank you for watching. If you created something cool, I'd love to see it. So make sure you tag me over on Instagram and also give me a follow if you want to. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.